and welcome to Life in the Mind, a neurodivergent podcast presented by neurodivergent people. I'm Joy Amy Wigman. And I'm Marie Spear. This is the second half of our chat about neurodivergence and relationships to food. Um, we had a little chat last week uh, about it. Uh, so if you haven't listened to that one, go and listen to the part one first. Um, or just carry on with this one. You do you. <laughs> um, so I, I, I wanted to start out by telling a little bit of a story about, oh, me being a picky eater. Because I've had that for the whole of my life. Oh, she's such a picky eater. Mm. Uh, especially when I was a kid. And there were lots of things that growing up I would not eat. So fruit, for instance. I don't even have to name the fruits that I wouldn't eat. I just wouldn't eat fruit at Ooh. all. Interesting. No fruit. Um, and most vegetables. Most vegetables mm. I wouldn't eat. Um, and this carried on into my 20s. And I was living with my best friend at the time. Um, I was about 27, 28. And there was a TV show called Freaky Eaters. Mm. And my bestie said, oh, I've watched this episode of Freaky Eaters. And this girl on her is, is you. So I'm going to use some of the... Um, techniques that they used and see if I can help you get a kind of healthier <laughs> a healthier way of eating yeah. and what it was was she brought out bowls of all these different things so fruits and vegetables that were cut up so small that the thing I would focus on would be the flavor and not the texture mm-hmm. because it it had always been my complaint was always the texture yeah. never the flavor it was always the texture um and then the ones that i liked we just kind of slowly made them bigger and bigger so grapes i absolutely love grapes but i did not eat a grape until i was in the second half of my 20s oh wow and even now they have to be small grapes they have Mm. to be little grapes um or if they're big grapes i could cut them in half I i would eat lots of them but not lots of the amount in my mouth at once yes um, and I think a lot of my not eating those foods is about the shame of how I would have to eat them yeah. in front of people. Yes. And food <laughs> and shame, it, they go together like a horse and carriage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Don't try and eat either of those. Though. The horse is eaten somewhere. Uh, yeah, somewhere. In, in, some, in some countries it's fine. Uh, <laughs> So we're gonna get on to supermarket like, scandals, aren't we? <laughs> Don't eat a carriage wheel. It's not actually made of chocolate and marshmallow. Oh, is it not? It's oh, a shame. I want a wagon wheel now. So yeah, good I really want a wagon wheel. Um, but the jam ones, not just the normal ones. What? Yeah, yeah, there were jam ones as well. I thought. I thought they always had jam. No, they didn't always have jam. They had original ones and they had jam mm, ones. I don't think I have. Because one of my egg foods can be biscuits and sort right. of the crumbliness and so I, I don't think I had a wagon wheel until I was like 24 and I was like oh my god these aren't heinous as I imagined <laughs> oh, wow okay. lovely so uh, shame and food mm, um, such things yeah I mean just in our culture as, yeah, as okay. general in mm-hmm. terms of that because obviously there is a health element to it we all have to eat Mm-hmm. Um, and we can, you know, eating too less, too less, too less, or too little, or too much of anything. You know, anything in extremes can be detrimental to our health mm. of anything, which is life. Yeah. Um, but there's such a, a shaming the way that we go about promoting what is right and wrong is, is still such a shaming thing. Yeah. And especially if you have certain things that you can you can manage them by dealing with it in this way yeah so like some people can only eat a grape if they peel it or something like yeah, that. i know yeah. people who can only do that um i can only have bananas at like a really that's like a really tiny window of time <laughs> um, i'm like yes this banana is this will actually go down like, down into my stomach without coming out again it's that 10 minute Lovely window details. and i can i can eat the banana yeah, <laughs> yeah. now it's too brown or now it's too green nope <laughs> Yeah. But I think um, I think that shame stops a lot of um, neurodivergent people from from eating that yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah. So eating in a 
good way in it's, a way and allowing themselves to interact with things like you were saying yeah in a way that's actually healthy in yeah. general and also healthy for oneself yeah i mean i uh, uh i get like complete overwhelm about uh things like making sandwiches i don't i don't know what it is mm. um think and thinking about and planning food i have a real block on and i i i have other friends who say that they have the same thing mm. um that in terms of eating healthily you have to do a lot of planning of what you're going to eat and it is that planning that gives off that block and then they will just go straight to a safety food mm. uh, yes. and it's easy, easy because they're getting overwhelmed yes there's like an almost a well potentially one aspect the executive dysfunction trail of there are all these steps to create this paradigm this thing um but trying to get them in the right order and start on that trail yeah. can be really hard to get them in order and actually get started yeah. that one element from the neurodivergent side alone is a big thing and then there's like so being out at a restaurant mm. if there are things that you you can't put in your mouth so i have an aversion to um I, I can eat lettuce if it's like baby leaf stuff. Mm -hmm. But I can't eat the crunchy kind because it gives me the ick. Mm. We've been talking about the ick. So <laughs> me, <laughs> during our break, me and Mario were talking about foods that give us the ick and we realised we were actually doing the ick movement. Um, and uh, there, is, there is definite shame about doing the ick movement around food. Um, yeah. But like if I'm at a restaurant and like... I like the look of a salad. I would never order a salad because there is a chance it will be the wrong kind of lettuce. There is also the look that I'm going to get be given when I pick out the tomatoes because I can't bear the way they feel or, or more likely get someone else to pick out the tomatoes because I can't even touch them. I have ice cubes. Ice cubes? In drinks. Yeah. Right. I, I find the... Um, I think it's the difference between the, the sensation. It's like... Mm wet thing, moist thing, liquid thing. Oh, no, that was the hard thing bashing into me and being <laughs> freezing right. as it's doing. Like, yeah. I can manage it weirdly. I can manage it when it's, like, whiskey or something. But if it's in, like, a, like a pint of orange juice and lemonade or something, mm. it's like, nope, that's just, no. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> the ick. The, the ick. ick, yeah. That's all, all, that's all for the cameras. Have a big ick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, and, and um, I'm not going to talk about it specifically, but um, as a child, if you if your parents don't know you're neurodivergent and you did the ick mm -hmm. during dinner and you got punished for it mm -hmm. because obviously somebody has made you that food and it is very it's considered rude to make kind of sicky noises about the food yeah. that you've been given and then they're doing it with the best of intentions and, then, and yeah stuff and yeah knowledge. and that that has a knock-on effect so mm. you you like i know i got less brave with food mm. out of the fear of the shame of how i would have to eat things yeah. i mean even now um like even in a joking way, members of my family might go, are you, are you peeling that apple? Yeah. And that will stop me from eating apples in front of them because I have yes. to eat that a certain way. Yeah, oh yeah, um, I, I will avoid actually just generally eating around people most of the time. Yeah. Just not because of like a, just, I think we mentioned, we were talking about this before in the um, other episode, half this kind of, this topic of that divide between i want to just eat and get eating done mm. and i think because it's such a sensory experience as well just like i prefer to eat and then talk to people um and actually properly interact with the person because if i'm eating it's a different thing and it can also just oh it's much harder to be like am i looking after my icks and my sensory needs mm. around the food whilst especially if you're like a date or something like that you sit across and like I'm overthinking this so much. <laughs> or like, or not, I'm thinking this. There are so many aspects to this that are yeah. important. Rather than overthinking, kind of that paradigm can be detrimental. For me, there are so many aspects within this situation that are important. It's too much. And I much prefer to eat 
and then interact with the person. Because you've got the two ways of it, haven't you? Mm. There, there's either there are a lot of textures and flavours in here that I need to deal with, or there's this is a very pleasurable experience for me. I want to focus on that and all the um, the different sensory sensory things that come with it. Yeah. So it's either this is a pleasurable experience, stop and interrupting me, <laughs> or this is a very difficult experience. I just need to focus on getting through it. <laughs> Yeah, or <laughs> well, just like a overwhelming experience. Mm, overwhelming, if you're already yeah. a bit sensitized, um, what? Yeah, I think it's a word. Um, then you're adding, you're stimulating two senses: mm. your taste and the mouth texture, which is where a lot of our like, most sensitive, t- touchy areas are. <laughs> our body. Touchy There's some areas. sort of yeah, touchy areas. scientific term. Touchy areas. That sounds. Nope. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> I've spoken to a lot of people who, um, uh, what's the word? Uh, they compartmentalise their food. Mm. So they don't eat anything on their plate together. They eat it in a specific order and separate. <sighs> the one you leave to the end. The best food. Which food is going to be the chosen food? Which, the which food is the, the best end. bit of the plate? And that right. bit's going to be left until... That's that's a massive thing that I do. Yeah. It's like you got a plate of like a roast dinner is a perfect example where like, this is the best bit. And we eat quite a lot of it with going around the plate with other bits and stuff. But there will always be this is the taste, the texture, the foodness that I want to be the final, the finale of this meal. Do you not worry that the the good bit's going to go cold and it won't be so good? Um, I think I'm so used to having food cold <laughs> because <laughs> by the time I've actually finished the meal. I, I, because I eat so slowly, probably because I'm getting distracted by other things, or I'm just to talk to other people, or actually just the whole thing's a bit. I eat fastest when I'm sitting by myself, eating food, doing some like watching TV, and I eat at like a normal person speed. But otherwise, I'm so used to just like, yeah, it's all cold within like half time, half halfway through. I'm gonna anyway. pick you up on that. It's not mm. normal person speed. You are a normal person. <laughs> It's in like the standard speed. Yes, the standard I know. speed. Because otherwise they'll eat too slowly. And I'm I'm genuinely bored by the end of it. And that's that's the problem. That's why I'm playing it. Basically, like a, I'm not letting you talk down optimal. to yourself, man. <laughs> well, no. You're exceptional. Yeah. But it's that, yeah, there is a standard. Yeah. I think yeah. that's the thing, isn't there? But and also for me it helps to note when I'm doing something that's outside of because it's my normal. Mm, yeah. Okay, what yeah. Actually, but it's a good point. It is a good point. It's so easy. It's so easy to feel, fall into those shoulds. Like, oh, we should do it in this way because ah. that compartmentalizing mm-hmm. thing is such a good example of. And it's one of the stereotypes, actually, that people yeah. know. <laughs> they know there's the amount of it. Yeah. That they, that it is known within the zeitgeist of um, experience around autism of not letting foods touch or something like that. Whereas I like to hide textures of things with the other things. Um, yes. So if there's a texture, yeah. I'm much more about texture than flavours, mm. I think. Uh, so if there's a texture that I don't like as much on my plate. So green cabbage is a good um, example because I love the taste of green cabbage. Yeah. Don't like the texture of green, <laughs> green cabbage. So what I'll do is I'll cut it up reasonably fine and then hide it in with like my chicken or um but it has to be something with a tougher texture so i can't something chunky so i couldn't put it in my cauliflower cheese because yeah. that's a soft texture and i enjoy the soft texture away yeah. From the, yeah yeah it's gonna mask <laughs> it it's enough of a it's like disguising one taste with something that's you have to be a strong taste otherwise yeah. it's like that's not doing anything I'm drinking smoothies so i get some banana into me because i hate <laughs> banana <laughs> yeah and it's a great source of potassium potassium, potassium. potassium. yeah potassium. Potassium. Great it's, great it's a great source of banana. It is a great source of banana. <laughs> banana is the best source of banana you can find. Do you know what's not a great source of banana? <laughs> when you get the ick about banana, which I really do, and your toddler <laughs> likes to carry her bits of banana around for a while and then just hand them to you like they're an amazing <laughs> gift and it like plops into your hand. It is just the worst yeah, and it's, it's like I love you with all of my being, <laughs> but please don't do this to mummy. Mummy will cry. <laughs> Yeah. Like, <laughs> Please oh, give it to Daddy. Daddy doesn't care. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's that's proper. Yeah, yeah it's proper. Visceral. But like with the compartmentalization of food, mm. 
I I think I go between the two extremes, mm. where um, a lot of the time I'll be going around doing what my family call mini meals, like putting the t- taste together. Sometimes it'll be that kind of texture, t- texture or flavour hiding, mm. if there's something there that I'm not as fussed about. Or would actually just me indulging and actually utilising that hypersensitivity that I have um, and putting together the complementing. It's like, haha, I can dial in so much to those flavours that I can actually make this dish better yeah. <laughs> by knowing exactly what complements each other and doing like this little, little puzzle on the thing. It's like, ah, this is brilliant. A little experiment for your ADHD oh. brain. Yeah, yeah, edible chemistry. That's what cooking is to me. Yeah, edible yeah. chemistry. <laughs> That's the way I cook as well. I'm gonna, then, I'm gonna tell the husband about that because he, yeah, edible chem- chemistry. I think that's how he sees it. He, he yeah, yeah. It's one of the reasons he loves it's such it. Fun. Um, <laughs> but I, I'll, so I'll do that kind of putting it together, and sometimes yeah, it's very much a hiding things or making it so that's more bearable. But then, and or I'll mix it all together. It's like it'll be mm. something where I just put it put everything into the bowl. And it's just like blah, 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 all the taste, or because they will compliment. Or if, especially if I'm really like sensitised or basically overload, edge of meltdown, um, I'll have to properly divide things up so mm-hmm. they don't touch. And if it's like the scrambled eggs, if there's a little bit of runniness that gets like, onto the like onto toast, and it makes the toast go soft. And then, but it's a very, very, very. But there's so much shame around it. There is. Did you see me physically recoil when you said uh, uh, that you were mashing stuff up together? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah I can't. I can't eat the little bits that are left of the, the plate. So, so my, my other half and my oh, stepkids okay. say that that's the best part of the meal at the end of like a roast dinner or something when you've got all the little bits left mm. and you squish them all together and eat them in one mouthful, like that. Like I always leave little bit. I, my plate is never completely clean. There are always little bits. Oh, okay. Because I just the idea of putting all the, those things together is. Oh, it's like an overwhelm. It's like all of those coming together to the. In... Yeah, I, th- I yeah, I think it's. Uh, but I, I, again, I think it's texture, not flavour. Oh yeah, it's different it's textures that don't go together. In one mouthful of everything. Mm, it's too much. Ooh, that's interesting. So basically, what we're saying is that <laughs> society needs to normalise people eating their food in the way they need to eat their food. Yeah, you so, do you. It's like, not actually hurting anyone. If you wanna, if you wanna nibble your banana from the sides rather yeah. than from the top, you should be allowed to do that without yeah. people like Just giving full you on, trouble. Like, have it squishing round your face in the, this weird shape. And be like, okay, that I would find that really because oh no, man, now I'm imagining no, like yeah. banana getting it. It's visceral, isn't it? When you see um, bloody bananas. We were talking about. Uh, <laughs> We meant, uh, mentioned off uh, off air about um, I can't watch things like I'm a celebrity get me out of here because of the food the food empathy. Yes. So of I like bush tucker trials, like I can I can I can feel that in my mouth. Nope, nope, not but, having it. And then the, the other the positive side of that kind of visceral memory, um, texture memory, sense memory, is for me at least I have I can think of like a strawberry really nice ripe strawberry and it's almost like I've got one in my mouth yeah it's like, I'm salivating like I don't even like strawberries I'm salivating feel <laughs> the thing is like a, it's like a ghost strawberry which is really cool to be able to note that and then tap into that if you're having an ick to go what is one of my safe foods or something yeah. is I do have that visceral memory with I've never thought of doing mm. that I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna do that next time I get an ick, okay. which happens pretty much every day. Life hack. <laughs> Life <laughs> hacks with Murray Spear. <laughs> okay, so um, you guys at home, so tell us about some of your icks. Tell us about some of some of your food shames that you wish weren't food cha- shames. How how do you find a way of eating foods that works for you that you wouldn't necessarily do in public? Yeah. Um, let's normalise it. Let's get people eating the food that they want to eat. Yeah. They're not eating just because they don't eat it in the same way as everybody else. Yeah, and healthily, obviously, but yeah, yeah. like eat what you can eat. eat. Eat what you can eat is the most fundamental. Eating is quite important. It's very important to keeping going along with breathing. Yeah, they're quite breathing quite fundamental eating. things. So, so let's keep breathing. Food. Let's keep eating. Yeah, um, we'll keep living. And let's keep living. <laughs> <laughs> okay, folks, that's it for this episode. Find us on Instagram at life.inthemind. Our other socials are linked in the bio. Don't forget to like, subscribe and comment.